What's up, guys? Easy with Defense Resources. Um, I guess this is going to be uh, the fourth installment of our Go Bag series. Uh, this is uh, Go Bag 4. I'm going to talk about just some tips and some tricks and some just some random stuff that I, I didn't really want to stick in the other installments. Um, I, I'm going to be using my computer because I've kind of been typing stuff here and there throughout the day when I've had time just so I can kind of keep some sort of um, structure to what I'm going to talk about. And it may jump around and it may cover some stuff that's already been covered and, uh, you know, different stuff like that. Um, first, I'm going to start up here. I'm going to kind of talk about the bag. Um, one of the big things to me is research. These days we have the world at our fingertips. Internet, uh, cell phones, smartphones. Um, I remember the days that, you know, you know, cell phones were about this big and they had a carry strap on. So uh, use the research and read or watch uh, reviews on YouTube. I got a lot, of, a lot of information from YouTube from various people. There's some really good uh, inter there's some really good reviewers out there. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that have already been down this road, and they're putting out the information pretty much for free. Take advantage of that. Can't tell you how important that was to my search to find the correct equipment, because you know there's other people out there that have already taken the time and the money and put the stuff through through the ringer to see how it will do. So it just behooves you to take take advantage of that. Um, like I said, I think I went over this uh, in Go Bag 2. Choose a durable bag. It's comfortable. It's comfortable to, car to carry. And it's big enough and it's equipped enough for its intended use. I often use uh, buy once, cry once is something I normally use. And basically what that means, yeah, like, like we're talking about this bag, this Osprey Mana 36 how it was $170 after shipping and everything. And I just, I cringed at that. And it really, it took me almost a month to finally commit to that. But I'm happy. Okay, I've bought the bag. I'm happy. I've already cried. I've laid down the cash and got it over with. So buy once, cry once. Uh, that's my method. So uh, here's a good one. Uh, cool does not equal functional. And I used to be really bad for this. I'd have, you know, some kind of little spy gadget or gear or some, you know, some huge pick kit, you know, and I'd maybe use three picks out of the entire kit all the time uh, for lock sport or for emergency or whatever. Uh, so uh, a lot of that stuff, some of it's gimmicks, you know. So you got to look at, are you, you got to evaluate whether or not you have selected this piece of equipment, this bag or whatever you're putting in it, because is it functional or is it just flat out cool? I'm guilty of doing that in the past. I probably still do it. I'm sure some stuff in here that you know I could probably ditch and be fine. So uh, just just look at its functional value versus its cool factor. Choose a neutral color that will blend in and not stand out. Um, I discussed this I think in Go Bag Two. Um, if you're in an environment, if you're in an environment 99% of the time where it is flashy is, is normal, then flashy is normal. If it's not, it's not. But I try to choose a color that's going to work on campus, in the city, or in the county, in the rural, in the woods, or wherever. I try to choose a color that's the neutral color, you know, tans, grays, uh, greens, stuff like that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a plain, well-built, load-carrying equipment. And that's basically, you know, I know guys that use messenger bags. You know, they, they, they roll with a messenger bag. I know some guys that have rolled with um, those Maxpedition, I think they're called Versapacks, uh, 511, I think it's called a pushback. But, uh, you know, those guys, that they run real slick, you know, real slim, minimalist style stuff. They carry, you know, a bottle of water, water purification tablets, some uh, energy stuff, uh, a couple of cliff bars, you know, just very minimal and that, that has its merits, where they're shedding a lot of this uh, snivel gear and stuff, and they are running with their bare bones what they have to have to do what, they're, what that bag is intended to, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, just, just like I said, it's all personal, all your intended use, it's whatever whatever's essential to you, okay? Uh, now, I'm, I guess I'm going to move into some of the stuff, uh, you know, some of the stuff I've learned, you know, 
you know, some of the crap I put in these bags. Um, one thing I've I've seen, and I used to see this uh, around the, a lot of the tactical crowds, and it's it's just a pet peeve of mine. Now this stuff is not stuff I'm recommending for you. I'm just saying this is the stuff that that I have garnered that I've picked up over the years. Only attach things to the outside of the bag if they won't fit inside. Um, there's a term for the people they just they strap everything they can to the outside of the pack. It's called like a it's called gypsy camping or gypsy camp. Uh, so because uh, it looks like a gypsy camp, but. Uh, to me, they look like a walking keychain. They've got all kinds of this stuff just hung all over their bag. And, you know, at a certain point, you start thinking, maybe you should have got a bigger bag. So that's just one of my things. I hate it because it gets caught if you're moving through the woods or if you're, you're constantly in and out of a vehicle or something or moving your bag in and out. That stuff gets caught. It can get tore out. It can cause damage to the bag. There's, just, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and that's why I just don't like using it. This kind of goes back to the, one of the other points. Uh, avoid useless stuff. Um, I used to put cool stuff in my bag just in case. Uh, ended up never using it. Uh, think needs versus wants. And that's a real big one. That's something I've had to, that's one of my big things I've had to come to grips with is to compare, is this a need or is this a want? So we'll go a little bit into that later. Um, try to focus on the intent of the bag when selecting equipment and quantity. A day bag doesn't need three weeks worth of water purification tablets in it. That's another one of my big ones that I've had to work my, myself out of. Uh, I was the guy, you know, if you had a bag that max, you could get three days out of. You could drag three days out of a bag, which, you know, a bag like this, it's very possible. So, you don't need, you know, I used, to, I used to have like 20 water purification tablets. You know, you don't, you don't really need that many. You shouldn't at least, I don't think. You know, it might even be dangerous to take in that much, but I, I used to carry around a lot of water purification tablets. And just wasn't, it just was, wasn't, it was outside of the scope of what that bag was for. Okay, so um, that's, that's one of them. Uh, sometimes redundancy is not your friend. Uh, you do you do not need a spare flash, or you probably don't need a spare flashlight and a headlamp in one, in that one bag. And I used to do this too. I had this little tiny Meritac AAA light, and I would just I'd use it as kind of like just a regular task light or whatever. And I also had a headlamp. Well, after evaluating everything, I figured why do I need this little this little Meritac task light when I've got a headlamp that I can use for the same thing. So that went the Meritac. Um, uh, Ziploc bags, that's a big one. That that could probably go in the next section, but you know, well, um, I'm a big believer in Ziploc bags. Uh, I think they're, I used to use these little, um, they're like a military organizer, a clamshell. You unzip it, opens up, and it's got all this webbing in it. And pockets and zippers and snap links and all kinds of stuff that you can just store little small items in like pins, battery cases, batteries, uh, just, just various different stuff. Mags for a pistol if you do that. Uh, I got away from that and I started using the dead space and Ziploc bags to kind of keep stuff organized. Uh, it, it say they're very cheap. I recommend the freezer bags because they're constructed a little bit thicker plastic than just the regular sandwich bags. Uh, here's this, here's another thing. Uh, think light. Your knees, back, and shoulders will thank you. Now, I went through my bag and, you know, never mind. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, 550 cord is your friend. The core, the core strand. See, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with 550 cord, it's a military parachute cord. And it's very popular and they make it in a gazillion different colors and patterns. Uh, but inside of that 550 cord, there's uh, six or seven extra strands of smaller diameter cord, and you can yank that out of it and actually have eight sets, eight strands of useful cordage. And I've actually built shelters, uh, natural shelters, uh, lashings and stuff like that out of just the, the, uh, the cord, the, the core strands, the smaller strands. 
Uh, it's really good, really good stuff. I highly recommend 550 cord or the it's bigger brother the 750 cord. Which the only difference between 550 and 750 cord is the 750 cord has more strands inside. Okay, so let's move down here. I think this next, yeah, this next part is just general tips, just kind of all over the place. Um, buy a cheap kitchen scale and weigh everything. I went to Walmart. This is one of those uh, lightweight hiker tips that I took and used. I went to Walmart and dropped $20 on a digital scale that can weigh up to 11 pounds. Uh, I, you write down all the weight, write all your weights down, weigh everything in your bag, including the empty pack, everything, individual. Uh, use grams because they're more accurate than ounces. This exercise helps you see the weight versus benefit. And boy, were they right. And I wrote, I weighed, I took a, I took a, you know, a night that I, you know, I didn't have to study or anything. And I sat down and I laid everything in, got the scale, got me a notepad and started writing down weights. This gives you an edge and elimination of unneeded items or excessive quantities. When I did this, I shaved over, over a pound off my bag just by doing this. Just that mental image, just that mental I'm not going to tell you what we used to call it, so, you know, a mind screw, but uh, it would allow you to kind of visualize more than what you're seeing from the outside. You're sitting there thinking, well, holy crap, that thing weighs that much, or do I really need, you know, 15 Tylenol or, or Motrin or whatever when I can get by with probably six? That kind of thing. It kind of, it puts into a different perspective, I guess you could say. Uh, if you are going to have this bag and you're serious about it, use the bag. Hike it, walk with it, use the stuff that's in the bag. This will allow you to identify issues early on and make adjustments. Using the stuff in the bag gives you practice and time to evaluate the value of the equipment. This can also help you eliminate unneeded equipment, and that's the truth. Once you start strapping this thing on, you know, 25 pounds don't seem like much until you're three miles in and, you know, three or four or five, whatever miles in. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's the truth. Uh, I didn't really see it. Um, and usually when I do my walk, when I go walking with this thing, I, I load it down with almost a gallon of water. So I make it heavier just to kind of get more, I guess, more training out of it or more weight, more challenge out of it. So I, I believe in, in using it, hiking with it, carry it, because uh, you never know when this bag is going to save your life or or maybe you can, you know, that extra pain of carrying a, a heavier pack will help you be more motivated to shave some of the more unneeded items out. And uh, when I talk about using the stuff that's in the bag, uh, I use my water filter, you know, I test out my equipment. I want to use my water filter. I've used it. I've used the water purification tablets. Didn't have to, but I wanted to. So that uh, the the fire equipment. I'm a I'm a big. I like. Um, I'm not quite a fire bug, but I like making uh, fire with natural material. I've got fire starters and all this other crap and big lighter in my pocket, but I like to uh, go find natural tinder and make fire that way. It's, you know, gives you just a, a sense of accomplishment. So I try not to, I make it a challenge to myself not to have to use what's in this bag. But I use the ferro rod and the knife and all that and use natural material. And it's, it's, it's a good way to practice. So that's, that's that. Try to select items that have multiple uses. This was a big one. An example of this is the poncho, the ripstop USGI poncho that I've got. It can be a poncho. It can also be a tarp to cover something up. It could be a shelter. I've made small A-frames out of it, lean twos. It can be a water catch. I don't know if you've seen this, but you can take and string the edges up or prop them up with, uh, with poles. And you could make this big funnel out of this poncho. And when it's raining, it will catch more water because it's got more surface area and it can be funneled into a container like a cup or uh, into a bucket to catch the water. And that's clean water. So 
and that's a good way to get clean water pretty quickly if it's if it is raining. It can also be a load litter, which you know if you're uh, the prior military guys know you can you know you can roll it up a certain way with two poles and make a stretcher or, or a litter out of it. Uh, you can also use it to carry stuff. You know, I've seen people fold their poncho up and put stuff in it they need to carry, and then you know they can pick it up and manage their load a lot better. Other examples of multi-use items are the dental floss. I think we already talked about that. The pet balls, the fire the fire starter I talked about in the last one. Uh, you can use it. It's got petroleum jelly in it, and petroleum jelly is good for, like my hands crack in the winter, you can use it to kind of help moisten your skin and, and fight those cracks because they can be quite painful in certain spots. You can use it for your chapped lips. You know, it's got several different things. The Fresnel lens, like you said, you can use it as a magnifying glass, or you can use it to start fires. So. Uh, down here next one is uh, focus on what I like to, I call my big five shelter water food fire and first aid those are my big five now yours may be different and that's perfectly fine but that's just my big five uh, and that's kind of based off the the three the rule of threes uh, you can't survive without you can't you can survive three minutes without air we got air covered for now hopefully uh, you can you can survive three days without water, three weeks without food, and that's the rule, basically the rule of threes. So uh, the fire, you know, you can do, fire is a multi-use item. It's kind of a comfort thing too. Uh, first aid, that's a no-brainer. Um, but it says,